Hey guys, Jay Yudlovsky here. So I wanted to run through a quick tutorial with you on how I would take uh, an image that was in a calendar that somebody asked me to fix up for them so that they could print it, how I would go through the process of scanning it in and retouching it and making it basically good to print at an 8x10 print. So here's the image. Um, I've already scanned it and brought it into Photoshop. I scanned it at 600 dpi. It's um, pretty much the best quality that I could get out of the scanner that I have. And uh, you can see, you know, there's some issues with this here. There's a little watermark stain here. We've got uh, some of the pages got stuck together, I guess, when it had gotten wet. So we're going to fix that up, clean this up. You see some spots on the trees here that are um, that need to be retouched. And then uh, if we zoom in here, because it was a print and um, I scanned it in, from a printed image, as you zoom in, you can actually see the little pixels of how, or little dots, I guess, of ink, it's not really pixels, dots of ink, on uh, how the image got printed. So we're gonna see if we can take care of that, smooth out the image a little bit, uh, retouch it, and kind of bring some life back into it, and make it good enough to print at an eight by 10 size. So the first thing I wanna do here is I'm just gonna go through and retouch all the areas that need to be retouched. It's primarily up in this top area here, but if there's anywhere else I see where I might need to get rid of a little dust or a little dirt or something, you can see some areas down here. Um, we're going to take care of that. So I'm not going to go step by step through that. I'm just going to cruise through. I'm going to retouch it up and then we'll move on with the process from there. Okay, now that I got my retouching all done and got the sky cleaned up and cleaned up some spots down here in the snow, um, I was looking at this area up in the sky and I'm still not really happy with it. It kind of looks a little smudgy, so I had the idea of just putting in some clouds here. So I just used a simple brush. I went to my brushes. I downloaded some uh, cloud brushes that you can see here, and I just placed them right onto the sky over here. So I'm just going to turn that layer on. I've already done it. I've used a layer mask to kind of blend them in a little bit more. If I turn it off, you can see there's the edge of the brush. So I just kind of blended it in and I, help it, I think it helps kind of cover up this area up here where it just, you know, it still looked a little blurry for, for my liking. Okay, so now that we have the image retouched, I want to make some adjustments. Select all the layers, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to do Convert to Smart Object. What this does is it allows me to use smart filters now that work non-destructively on the image. And if I ever need to go back and edit anything I've already done, I still have all those layers inside this smart object that I can go ahead and use. So next, I want to try and take care of some of the, the dots from the print, or the, well, the scanned image and the little print dots that we saw here. So if I zoom in, we can see the little colored dots from it being printed. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is come up to Filter. I want to go to Blur. And then I want to go to Gaussian Blur. And in this case, I'm going to just kind of come to an area where I can see some of the, the dots here. I'm going to turn it on and off and just see what I think looks good. Um, we probably want a radius around one. We could try two and see how that looks. You don't want it to be too much, but you want it to be enough to kind of start to blend everything together so that those little dots don't appear. Back it down. We'll try 1.3. Let's just go with that. So I'm going to click OK there. And now if we zoom in, we can see it started to blur everything together a little bit more. But now it's also not very sharp. So the next thing I want to do is go to Filter, and I'm going to sharpen it and run an unsharp mask on it. So we're blurring together the colored pixels, and then we're going to sharpen it up a little bit and just add some detail back into it. And how much you put in, it just kind of depends on what you think looks good. Um, you just got to play with each image. Each image is different. So we'll just go with that. Apply that. So if we go here before, you can see the little ink dots here. After, they're a little less noticeable. And I think that'll be good for what we're going to print. Oh, you see here I turned on the unsharp mask only, which doesn't look good. So we turn the blur back on. 
and that helps blend everything back together. Okay, so I think it's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and also add, or actually go to the camera raw filter, see how we can just further fine tune this image a little bit. And what's nice about the smart filters again is that you can always go back and re-edit any of your items later on. So we'll just go through and change a few things here. We'll bring up the contrast a little bit. And the highlights. Shadows, I think they're okay. We'll leave those where they are. White, so make sure we set a good white point. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the Alt key here, or the Option key, and just sliding the slider when you start to see the little clipping points there, you know you're good, you've got a good white point. Do the same with the blacks, bring that down a little bit. Alright, I'm liking that, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of clarity. Maybe if I bring back this vibrance, let me boost the saturation a little bit. I think I'd like that better. And this is all to taste. You do it however you like it to look. All right. I'm going to leave the tone curve as it is. I'm going to add some more sharpening. I'll just put it up to, let's say, 80, around 85. Radius, I'm going to leave at 1. Detail, leave at 0.25. And for masking, again, I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key, which will let me see where is being masked. So the white areas is what's being sharpened. So I'll just drag that up. Okay, I think maybe I'll add just a little bit of noise reduction. Maybe it'll help with any other uh, little pixelation or, or the colors, I guess, from the print. Kind of help blend them in even more. So we'll just add a little bit here, maybe like 10. And I'll add in just a little bit of the color noise reduction too. Put in 10 there. All right. So I'm going to bring up the color noise reduction a little bit more. Color smoothness. Bring that up a little bit. All right. I don't think we need to do anything with the rest of these. I'm just going to hit OK. OK, so now we have our camera raw filters applied, kind of made it a little more saturated, a little more vibrant. And the next thing I think I want to do is try adding a few adjustment levels just to kind of see how that affects everything. So I'm going to start with a, a levels adjustment layer here. Sometimes I just hit auto and see what it does, see how it looks. So I'll try that. All right, that looks a little dark. Let's see if we just drop the opacity maybe and see how that kind of helps it. It just kind of helps richen everything up a little bit more. I like that. And we'll drop it back to 20%. Let's try and brightness and contrast here. So I'm just kind of trying different things and seeing how it looks. I can see down at the bottom here with the shadows, when I reduce the brightness, it kind of brings those out a little bit more. But I might not want to bring down the brightness in the rest of the image. So what we can do is we'll leave that around minus 9. Just play with the contrast a little bit. Let's we'll see before and after just kind of brings everything down a little bit more. And then maybe just to take the whole image overall, brighten it up just a little bit. Because you got to remember too, when you print, the way you see it on the screen and then the way it prints, the print is actually going to be a little bit darker. So you just want to kind of boost up the exposure just a little bit. Uh, maybe 0.25 or so. So that way when you print, it looks similar to how it does on the screen. Okay, so I think that's our final image there. I'll get this ready for print, send it out, save it as a JPEG, send it out, get it printed, and we'll see how it comes out. All right, so now that we finished up the image in Photoshop, I then saved it as a JPEG, and then I uploaded it to Costco online just to get it printed and see how it looked. So I got the print back here. I think it looks great. You can't see any of the little print dots that you can see in Photoshop. And I think it came out as a really good 8x10 print. So I hope this video helped you guys see the process that I used on how to scan in an image, fix it up, 
and then get it printed. Take care and thanks for watching.